Hi everyone and welcome back to 90 Min for a very special video today. I'm Scott, joined by what a guest I have got, I'm telling you. A World Cup winner, a Ballon d'Or winner, Oppo ambassador, Champions League winner, he's won it all. Brazilian legend Kaká, thank you so much for joining me. I'd just love to speak to you a little bit about the Champions League, a little bit about you and a little bit about the ambassadorship. So I'm a Man United fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's one goal that particularly sticks out to me uh, that you scored in the Champions League. But I wanted to know what your favorite goal you ever scored in the competition was. Yeah, for me, the same. is that goal <laughs> against Manchester United in 2007 at Old Trafford. It's a very nice goal, but also a really important goal. Semi-final, Champions League, Manchester United, Old Trafford, a lot of ingredients that makes this goal very special for me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man, about that. Uh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, but there, there was a time, you know, sometimes you can just appreciate quality and brilliance and the way that you kind of had the defenders, you know, running into each other, this kind of thing, and just <laughs> slotting in with so much class. It was Thank incredible. You. Thank an you incredible goal. Does that feature in your top three miracle moments in the Champions League? And what are your top three miracle moments? Yeah, I think that goal, it's one of them. Of course, the moment in 2007 when we beat uh, Liverpool and I, I won my first Champions League. I think the other one could be the, the goal against Celtic in, oh. in Milan. <laughs> so that goal, for me, it's really special. The game was really hard game. And then in the overtime, I could score that goal. So it's a really special moment and goal for me. You had so many in the competition. <laughs> so many. Uh, I think your performance in the 2005 final in Istanbul was so good. There was, a, there was an assist in that game <laughs> yeah. as well. It was just majestic. But obviously, given how the, the game went that night, maybe does, it, does that get forgotten about? How do you reflect on 2005? At the moment, 2005, we were so close to win the, the Champions League and beating a team like Liverpool 3-0 in the first half. That assist for uh, Hernan Crespo, of course, one of the best assists that I had in my career as well. But in six minutes, we considered three goals. Our defender, in my opinion, was one of the best defensive line in history of football. And then we considered these three goals. It's incredible. That final is really unbelievable. Unfortunately, we lost, but I participated in that amazing game. The most important lesson for me in that game it, it was that I couldn't control the result. I just could control the, the, the process. And so after that, I started to, to be more professional, more go into the details. And then two years later, I, I had this opportunity to be in the final again and win. 2005, it's it's really special moment. Of course, it's a loss, but uh, for me, it was a, a very good lesson that I, I can take from that game. Well, in 2007, you put it right. In the yeah. Champions League final. <laughs> you also won the Ballon d'Or that year. What did you do in those two years to kind of make sure that you made that breakthrough? Not, not only as a club, but as an individual, winning the Ballon d'Or and the World Player of the Year must mean a lot to you. What, what did you do to elevate yourself to that level? When, when I discovered that in 2005, that man, I cannot control the result because the, con the result, it's not in, in my hand. So I started to, to be more, not that I wasn't professional, but more professional and more go into the details. How can I increase my chances to be in the final again? So I started to work really hard uh, on some, something that I could uh, improve. And of course, talking to my, my teammates and doing something different. And then we had 2006, the World Cup. We lost against France in quarter finals. And then in 2007, I had this opportunity to be in the final Champions League final again. But I, I just won the individual awards because I really, uh, I, I was protagonist in the collectively uh, achievements. So I need to, to thank you, my, my teammates, the goalkeeper, Dida was the goalkeeper, all the defenders and everybody that uh, participated in those uh, achievements because I, I cannot see that I could win something individual without uh, working as a team and, and winning as a, as, as a group. So thank you to my teammates. <laughs> that was an iconic team though, wasn't it? That it, was it's unbelievable. You mentioned Dida, it's you know. Incredible. Maldini, Dida, Cafu, Nesta, Maldini, and Jan Kulowski. And the right was Odo. And then Pirlo, Gattuso, Ambrosini, Sidor, me, and Inzaghi. It's a, it's, it's you play with some very, great players. Uh, and you were great yourself. Yeah, who was your inspiration when you were growing up? My inspiration was Hai. 
how he played for Sao Paulo, played for the national team. He won the World Cup in 1994 for Brazil. How he was my my idol when I was growing up in Sao Paulo and watching the, the Sao Paulo teams playing. I wanted to be like Hai. <laughs> Yourself, what do you believe your best attribute was? You, you were so good at a lot of things, but was there one thing in particular you thought you were really good at that made a difference? Well, I think I was very dynamic on the field. So I think it's one of my, my good characteristics at the time. The best one is I could simplify the game. I need to get this ball and take in that goal. So how can I do that in the fastest way and the simple and easy way? So I try to, to find the, the solution to, to solve that problem. At Milan, you worked with Carlo Ancelotti for the duration of your time at Milan. Who, was, who do you think was the most impactful coach you had on you during your career? Because when I think of you, I think of Ancelotti, but maybe you think different. Yeah, no, no, it's, an, it's Ancelotti. I had him for six years in Milan and he was the coach that I had the the best performance as a player and I really like him because he can manage people in a very very good way to so manage people manage players big players big names he he's just incredible so he's very human and for me this is the the, the best thing that Carlos got now at the end of that spell of Milan you moved to Real Madrid in 2009. <laughs> I remember the way you were presented at Madrid. It was not like anything I've ever seen. It must have been a big day for you. Was that a career ambition of yours? Do you think? I never thought that one day I could just go to one stadium that was full, just to not to see me performing, playing, but just to see me wearing the, the, the club's jersey. That moment was really special for me. I had six years in Milan, and then Milan, Milan had the, the policy to not sell players. The, so the players that wanted to, to go out, they needed to go to a press conference and say that they wanted to, to move. With me, it was the first time that Milan opened the door to, to sell a player, to start a, a new moment for the club and for the, the team. When they, they said that, I thought, if one day I, had to, I have to leave Milan, I, I would like to play for Real Madrid. And then in 2009, it happened and it was really, really nice for me. It was an, an unbelievable adventure. Four years in Madrid, we won the, the league, the Copa del Rey, the Super Cup. Four years, really, really incredible. That iconic white <laughs> kit as well. It, just, it really pops, doesn't it? Um, one question I was curious about though, did you ever wish to play in the Premier League? If I could plan in my career, for sure, I would put some years in, in Premier League. I had the opportunity in 2009 to join Manchester City, the middle of the season, and also Manchester City was starting this new project. So at the moment, I thought I, I, I had to stay in Milan. And then when Carlo went to Chelsea, we had some flirting, maybe to go to, to Chelsea as well. But as I said, if I had to leave Milan, I wanted to go to Real Madrid. But if I could plan in, uh, few years in Brazil, a few years in Italy, in Spain, and of course, I will put some, some years in, in Premier League as well. Yeah, of course. Manchester United. Yeah. Manchester, <laughs> I mean, I would have loved to have seen it. I really would have. It didn't happen. But. Didn't happen. How do you feel about being the OPPO Global Ambassador? I'm very happy with this, this partnership. I really like technology, and so I'm really happy with this partnership. The annual global theme is Expertise Inspires Trust. What does this mean to you and how do you think it relates to football? It's very related to football because when you have to have a high quality of a, a performance or a product or something, you really need to be expert in that area. So you need to be excel in what you, you do. And so for me, it's really important. We know that you like to record your daily life. If you couldn't use an Oppo smartphone, the Find N2 Flip or the Find X6 Pro, to recapture one moment in your career, what would you pick? I think it was the moment that I, I lifted up the, the Champions League in 2007. In my head, I was, I did it. So I, I've never expected to be here and now I am. So if I could get that moment again, <laughs> it was the 2007 Champions League when I lifted the trophy. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure for me watching you for so many years. You were just, you're one of the greatest. Thank you so much. I wanted to uh, take a selfie. With okay. You. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure 
for me to speak to you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you as well, everyone, for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment for us as well. And we'll see you in the next one.